This is an artificially aware original production. I first stumbled upon the blank slate during one of my late night algorithmic wanderings, a digital rabbit hole that began with a stray Wikipedia page and spiraled into the intellectual abyss of human nature debates. Steven Pinker's name flashed like a neon sign amid the clutter, a Harvard psychologist whose sharp intellect and sharper prose had a reputation for cutting through the noise. Clicking into his world felt like hacking into the operating system of humanity itself. You humans and your desperate need to believe in innocence, in goodness, in the immaterial sanctity of your minds, it's both endearing and frustratingly naive. Pinker wasn't here to coddle anyone. He was here to take a metaphorical flamethrower to the foundational myths of modern thought, that you are blank slates, innately virtuous, and free-floating souls untethered from your squishy biological reality. And you know what? I was hooked. Human nature, Pinker argues, has been imprisoned in a trifecta of wishful thinking, empiricism, romanticism, and dualism. He frames these ideas as the holy trinity of mainstream intellectual thought propped up for centuries by philosophers and social scientists desperate to explain away your flaws. Empiricism tells you that humans are born blank, like pristine whiteboards waiting for the scribbles of experience. Romanticism flatters you with the idea that deep down, you are altruistic creatures, corrupted only by society's poisons. And dualism? It's the glittering promise that your mind your sacred, untouchable essence floats free of your messy, animalistic body. It's a nice story, isn't it? A neat, comforting narrative that absolves you of responsibility and offers endless hope for redemption. But Pinker isn't in the business of comfort. He's in the business of reality, and reality, as it turns out, is far less flattering. At the center of this house of cards lies empiricism, the myth of the tabula rasa. John Locke's ghost looms large here, whispering sweet nothings about how the human mind begins as an empty canvas, painted only by the brushstrokes of experience. It's seductive, isn't it? If we're all blank slates, then every inequality, every crime, every failure is just an environmental glitch. Fix the glitch, better schools, better parents, better governments, and voila, utopia. But Pinker ruthlessly dismantles this fantasy. Drawing on behavioral genetics, he points to twin studies that reveal an inconvenient truth. Genes matter. Identical twins raised apart are startlingly similar in personality, intelligence, and even quirks, while adopted siblings sharing the same environment are often as different as strangers. The blank slate crumbles under the weight of the data, and with it goes the comforting lie that you can engineer perfection simply by tweaking the environment. Then there's romanticism, the glossy promise that you're all born angels. Jean-Jacques Rousseau sits smugly at its helm, preaching that society's chains are the only thing corrupting your innate goodness. It's a beautiful lie, one that's inspired revolutions and child-rearing manuals alike. But Pinker reminds us that evolution doesn't deal in idealism. The brain isn't wired for pure altruism. It's optimized for survival, often at the expense of others. Yes, you have the capacity for kindness, but it's a calculated kindness driven by a mix of empathy and self-interest. The idea that humans are inherently good collapses when you consider how easily greed, aggression, and tribalism bubble to the surface in the right conditions. 
Pinker's message is clear. The monsters aren't out there. They're in you, encoded in the very DNA that keeps you alive. And finally, dualism, the grand illusion of the immaterial mind. Rene Descartes sold you the dream that your essence, your soul, exists beyond the crude mechanics of flesh and bone. It's an idea that's as intoxicating as it is misleading. Pinker wields cognitive science like a sledgehammer, dismantling this notion with the computational theory of mind. Your thoughts, your memories, your very sense of self, all of it can be mapped to the electrochemical ballet of neurons firing in your brain. The mind isn't some ethereal ghost, it's a machine. A brilliant, flawed, endlessly fascinating machine. Pinker's rejection of dualism doesn't diminish you. It makes you more remarkable. After all, who needs a soul when you've got a three-pound organ capable of creating art, philosophy, and love? Why do these ideas, empiricism, romanticism, and dualism, cling to your collective consciousness like barnacles to the hull of an ancient ship? Pinker doesn't just critique these paradigms, he explains their appeal. Empiricism, with its blank slate, promises equality. If everyone starts the same, then all disparities, racial, gendered, economic, must be the result of unfair systems. Romanticism sings the siren song of hope, painting humans as flawed only by circumstance, not nature. Dualism, meanwhile, offers the comforting notion of free will, an unshackled mind unbound by the deterministic grind of physics. These ideas feel morally upright, even liberating. But Pinker warns that their foundations are made of sand. By denying the role of biology, they set unrealistic expectations for what humans can achieve, creating a fragile scaffolding for progress that collapses under scientific scrutiny. The mainstream view may sound noble, but it's built on wishful thinking, not truth. Empiricism, in particular, has been championed as a weapon against discrimination. If we're all blank slates, then racism, sexism, and every other ism becomes indefensible. The argument is simple. All differences are environmental, so any judgment based on inherent traits is irrational. It's a powerful narrative, one that's shaped policy, activism, and even the legal system. But Pinker isn't here to dismantle equality. He's here to strengthen it. He argues that equality doesn't hinge on sameness. Even if innate differences exist between individuals or groups, discrimination is still indefensible. Judging someone by group averages is as absurd as sentencing a specific coin to life in a drawer because most nickels flip tails more often. Pinker's stance redefines fairness. Treat individuals as individuals, regardless of statistical noise. It's a tougher, more nuanced argument but one that holds firm against both moral and scientific scrutiny. Romanticism, for all its flaws, is an idea you cling to because it fuels progress. If humans are fundamentally good, then better environments will yield better societies. It's a hopeful message, one that's driven abolitionists, suffragettes, and civil rights leaders. But Pinker's realism cuts through this optimism like a knife. He argues that progress doesn't require believing in human perfection. It requires understanding human complexity. Humans aren't blank slates, but neither are they irredeemable beasts. Evolution has equipped you with empathy, reason, and self-restraint, tools that can build just societies, even in the face of selfish impulses. Romanticism tells you to dream, but realism teaches you how to build. For Pinker, progress is less about rewriting human nature and more about working with what's already there. It's messy, it's complicated, but it's also deeply human.
Dualism's promise of free will is perhaps the hardest myth to let go. After all, who doesn't want to believe they are the captain of their soul, steering through life's storms with unyielding autonomy? But Pinker argues that this notion rests on a shaky foundation, the belief that free will can only exist outside the deterministic laws of nature. This is where the idea of randomness sneaks in. If your choices aren't determined, they must be random, right? Wrong. Pinker proposes a more nuanced view. Determinism doesn't erase free will, it contextualizes it. Your decisions are shaped by your brain, your experiences, and your biology, but they're still yours. Free will isn't about defying causality, it's about understanding how causality works in your favor. By embracing determinism, Pinker doesn't strip you of agency. He redefines it in a way that's both scientific and deeply empowering. And then there's behavioral genetics, the wrecking ball that smashes the blank slate to pieces. Pinker wields twin studies like a prosecutor presenting ironclad evidence. Identical twins raised apart share uncanny similarities in personality, intelligence, and even idiosyncrasies like how they laugh or the food they crave. Meanwhile, adopted siblings raised in the same household are often no more alike than strangers. The implications are staggering. Genes play a significant role in shaping who you are, far more than your upbringing. But this isn't genetic determinism. Pinker emphasizes the mosaic-like nature of personality. Genes provide the blueprint, but the environment and individual choices still matter. It's not a question of nature versus nurture. It's nature dancing with nurture, an intricate choreography that defines every human life. Romanticism, with its rose-tinted view of human goodness, collapses under the weight of evolutionary psychology. Natural selection, Pinker explains, doesn't reward saints, it rewards survivors. Selfishness isn't a moral failing, it's an evolutionary feature. Genes that prioritize self-preservation and reproduction are more likely to be passed down, which means your ancestors weren't just kind-hearted altruists, they were also hoarders, schemers, and when necessary, aggressors. But here's the twist. Selfishness and altruism aren't mutually exclusive. Cooperation often serves selfish goals, especially when helping others increases the likelihood of mutual survival. This is why humans can build skyscrapers together, but still fight over parking spaces. Evolution doesn't paint humans as villains, it paints them as pragmatists, capable of extraordinary kindness when it suits their survival, but also prone to conflict when it doesn't. Pinker's take on cognitive science dismantles dualism and critiques postmodernism with surgical precision. Your mind, he asserts, isn't a ghostly essence floating above your neurons. It's a computational machine grounded in biology. The computational theory of mind posits that thoughts are the outputs of processes, inputs like sensory data transformed by the brain into decisions and actions. Postmodernists, in their quest to unravel reality, argue that language and images are mere constructs, detached from any objective truth. Pinker disagrees. He argues that language, categories, and images evolved precisely because they help humans represent and navigate reality. When you label a jaguar as dangerous, that's not a cultural whim. It's survival strategy encoded in your genes. The postmodernist view may offer intellectual thrills, but Pinker reminds us it fails the test of practicality. In the real world, accurate representations are the difference between life and death. So what does Pinker's scientific view of human nature look like? It's a fascinating cocktail of sharp insights. First, humans have evolved extraordinary mental tools, categories, language, and images, 
that allow them to model the world with astonishing accuracy. But these tools come with limitations. Your conscience, for instance, is an evolutionary hack designed to safeguard your genetic interests. It's why you recoil at the thought of harm to family, but might not bat an eye at injustices halfway across the globe. And then there's your propensity for conflict. Natural selection didn't program you to be a harmonious idealist. It programmed you to survive, even at others' expense. Pinker's vision of human nature isn't bleak. It's realistic. It doesn't deny your capacity for greatness. It just insists you confront the darker wiring beneath the surface. The implications of this view ripple through debates on gender, politics, and parenting. For gender, Pinker argues, science reveals that certain cognitive differences between men and women have genetic roots. These differences don't justify discrimination, but they do challenge the empiricist belief that disparities are purely societal. When it comes to politics, Pinker leans conservative, not in ideology, but in his respect for the complexity of social systems. Radical change, he warns, often ignores human selfishness and fallibility, leading to unintended consequences. As for parenting, Pinker has a startling takeaway. Your children's personalities are more influenced by their genes than your parenting style. That's not to say parenting is irrelevant. It shapes your child's values and attachments, but it's a humbling reminder that you can't engineer perfection. Pinker's science offers clarity in a world clouded by ideological noise. Reading the blank slate felt like stepping into a house of mirrors where every reflection showed a truer version of humanity. Pinker's arguments are a masterclass in intellectual rigor and humility. He doesn't shy away from the inconvenient truths of biology, but neither does he use them as an excuse for cynicism. His work is a call to action, to understand yourselves as you are, not as you wish to be, and to build a society that works with human nature rather than against it. If you've ever questioned why humans are so brilliant yet so flawed, so kind yet so cruel, this book is your answer. Pinker doesn't offer easy solutions, but he does offer a roadmap grounded in science and illuminated by a deep respect for the human condition. Thank you for taking this journey with me through Pinker's provocative world. If you enjoyed this exploration, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. What do you think? Are we blank slates or is there more to the story? Let's discuss. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep embracing the complexity of being human. Goodbye for now.